p.m. And we are going to go ahead and go with the roll call. Board Secretary. Thank you, Chairperson. Chairperson Ophelia Valado Garcia. Here. Citywide Representative Irma Macias. Here. Ward 1 Representative Humberto Sanchez. Ward 2 Representative Vice Chairperson Angie Gomez. Here. Ward 3 Representative Luis Aleman. Here. Ward 6 Representative Arthur Josa. Present. Garden Grove Unified School District Representative Felipe Guerrero. Present. You have a clone, Chairperson. Thank you very much. Uh, for our Pledge of Allegiance, uh, Commissioner Macias will lead the pledge. Please stand up. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, invisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, first on our agenda is we have a couple of presentations, actually one presentation. Um, we are going to have Commissioner Gomez um, present to Alonzo Loya for Youth Sports. Come on up. Nope. There we go. Okay. The Board of Recreations and Parks is pleased to recognize Alonso Loya, a volunteer coach from the Youth Sports Program. As a recipient of the Special Service to the Community Award for February 2020, Mr. Loya and his family have dedicated hundreds of hours to help the program participants improve their athletic skills. Their involvement with youth sports is appreciated beyond words. Mr. Loya's loyalty to the program and to our city's youth is truly admirable. It is with the help of volunteers like him that we're able to provide quality programs for our youth. Mr. Loya has been volunteering his time for, to the youth sports program for over a decade. Oh, wow, that's great. Mm -hmm. He coaches sons in sports like baseball, basketball, and flag football. Once his oldest son aged out of the program, he encouraged him to become a volunteer. They've been coaching together ever since. Amazing. Mr. Loya always been a popular coach. Parents consistently request to have their kids placed on his teams, always knowing what their children that their children would not only have a great time out there, but that they would also develop a strong fundamental skills, improve social skills, and learn the importance of teamwork. Mr. Loya has a knack for making things fun while also creating opportunities for the kids to enhance the necessary skill set needed to grow as student athletes. We can't thank him enough for his continued support and dedication to the youth in our community. He is the epitome of volunteer coaching. It is an honor to have him as part of the youth program, youth sports program, and worthy of the recognition he is being presented today. On behalf of the Board of Recreations and Parks, we thank him for his continued support and dedication to the youth in our community. We also thank his family for sharing his time and love of all supports with us. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. And we're going to get a picture. Okay. Here we go. That as well. And do we get a picture? Yeah, do you guys want to come up here? Family? Yeah, let's get the family up here. We'll do You're a like, family picture. I see. <laughs> the ones that aren't come shy. on over, you guys. Come this way. Yeah, Lisa. Thank you so much. Thank I'm you. Lisa. Oh, I'm also. Thank you very much for your service. Are you the one that's been helping? I'm the one You're playing? That's great. Yeah. What's your favorite sport? Congrats. Yeah, I think that's the best sport there. Yeah, that's on this side. Hopefully you'll see me. Probably going this way. I think we're the same side. A little closer if you can. Yes, yes. Okay, suck it in, boys. I love it. Who are we looking at? Bill or Juan? Whoever you got. Okay, we're going to look at you. In the middle. One more, one more. Ready? Here you go. One, two. Yep. Fantastic. Thank you. That's so awesome. Thank you for volunteering your time. Would you like to say anything? Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks so much. Now we had a second presentation, but it's going to be continued 
um, to next meeting um, because the person couldn't be here tonight. So we will continue uh, that presentation to March 25th, I believe, is the next meeting. Okay, we're going to go on to consent calendar. Okay. Yeah, okay. We should all have a copy of the minutes. Um, and it was for the meeting that was held on January 22nd. Uh, let me know if you have any changes. Otherwise, I can entertain a motion, please. Commissioner Pedrosa moved to approve the minutes. I'll second that motion. Commissioner Lamont. Great. All righty. We go ahead and pass as, a, as, as presented the minutes. And we're going to go now to absences. Board Secretary. Chairperson, the only absence we have this evening is Commissioner Humberto Sanchez. So noted. Thank you very much. And that is the end of the consent calendar. We are going to the next page to new business. And I'm sorry, Chairperson. We do need a motion to see if we approve the absence of uh, Commissioner Sanchez. Okay. Mia culpa. <laughs> okay. Can I get a motion to approve the absence for Commissioner, Commissioner Gomez? I motion to approve. Second. Sorry. Anybody? Irma Macias, Commissioner, yeah. second. Thank you very much. Absences are approved. And we, that is officially the end of the consent calendar. Move over to new business. And are you? Yeah. Okay. okay um, the item you have before you this evening is in regards to uh, the feasibility of a dog park at Centennial Park. So at the, um, and what we're looking for tonight from you is just your input uh, regarding that feasibility of, of the dog park at, at Centennial. Uh, and on December uh, 3rd, the city council directed the city manager to conduct a, a feasibility study to find out if it is uh, appropriate to have a dog park at Centennial Park. And so in your report, you have information from um, a dog park study that was done by this department, and, and I think the board brought to the board in 2010 uh, and then also in 2011. So it talks about uh, what was looked at, and there were some sites. In 2011, there was a couple of sites that included the state property at Bristol and Garden Grove Freeway. That was about a two-acre site, and then um, at Centennial. Um, so staff t took a look at this, and we determined that it, it is feasible to have a dog park at Centennial. Um, it's about a 3.5-acre plot of land, um, and it's behind our reservation office, if you know where that is. It's the southwest corner of the park. Um, so we utilized all the information from 2011 uh, and the analysis and um, um, looked at other cities and what kind of dog parks they have, how big they were, things of that nature, and determined it would be, you know, appropriate to have um, a dog park at Centennial. Um, not only at Centennial, we need them throughout the city. And so um, part of the recommendation will be to, when we have our uh, Parks Master Plan that's conducted next year, um, we look at where should they be in the city, um, just like where should we have baseball fields, softball fields, uh, soccer fields, things of that nature. Um, so this is, I think, they wanted to move forward uh, with a dog park because there is no dog park in our city. And so um, on March 3rd, uh, we'll be going to the city council and presenting this to them. And so um, we are recommending that... Um, they take action to either, if they want to approve the Centennial site, we have to um, uh, speak with the United States Department of Interior, National Park Service, to do a land conversion on that site, because I think it is, uh, help me out here, Ron, deeded education, and it needs to be, uh, uh, we need to convert it to open space. Um, and then also we need to identify funding for the design, development, and also money to maintain the site. Uh, then we'll need to hire a consultant to develop a concept plan, do the construction drawings, and a cost uh, estimate. We uh, have determined that it's about $1.6 million to develop a site like that. Mm -hmm. City of Anaheim just developed a one-acre site, and it, and it really doesn't have that much in it, and that was $400,000. 
So that's how much they cost. So it, dog parks are, you need to have separate entrances, uh, two gates, uh, one, you usually have a small dog park area, a large dog park area. Um, you have the doggy waste dispensers, uh, maybe some amenities, some um, shade and things of that nature. So it would be a good site. It has a uh, parking. And uh, so we just wanted to get your feedback um, on this. And um, I would like to just uh, provide that to the council next week. So any uh, comments or questions? Mr. Rosa, I'm really happy to hear about that. I've been pushing for this. I think I was the one that, that started that whole thing back in 2010 uh, when I approached the, the uh, then Parks and Rec Board about this idea. But we have dog parks all around us in Costa Mesa and Orange, uh, I believe Fullerton, Irvine. Uh, so it's great to hear that we're looking at, at this uh, option. Uh, City of Denver, by the way, I don't know how they compare in terms of uh, population to Santa Ana, but they have 12. So uh, it, it's a popular concept. Uh, the cost is pretty astounding, but I, I think that you could uh, do sponsorships. Uh, you have to have a fence around this thing, so you could easily put placards around the fence of the different sponsors, you know. So that would be something to look at. Um, and, you know, uh, the education thing... Um, Potentially, you could have a, a city parks program having like training uh, for dog training, have the volunteers out there doing uh, classes or whatnot to have some kind of an education element if need be. If we need to, uh, that's a little bit of a stretch, but you know, um, but that's okay. I mean, the land conversion would be similar to what we're doing at Rancho Santiago Community College District, right? Right, the centennial, it's the, de facto. Uh, I don't expect they'll have any issues with it, but yeah, but yeah, I'm really excited. I, I see the readers on my Facebook page for New Santa, Ana. this comes up a lot. People are asking about dog parks, so I think there's going to be a lot of excitement. Um, and that's kind of a central location, so you know, it, it seems like a good place to go. Um, I, if I can, I'll try to get to the meeting and address the council, but I, I just think it'd be fantastic. Uh, Commissioner Macias, um, for a while I have um, talked to a um, number of individuals in regards to parks for our residents. And as much as I do appreciate a dog park, we, the, the city is divided into the south, the central, and the north part. I don't think that the city is ready for to have that as centennial since it's the central part of of the city. And uh, the reason is because we as residents, we don't have parks. Been in Santa Ana for 47 years and it's not, I don't know what you call a park, but for me, I think my kids, my residents deserve a space, even if it's a corner pocket park. But um, at this moment, I don't, Probably in, in like a Santiago Park where they have they take responsibility of their dogs. I've seen it, but some areas we just don't take care of our animals, and I don't think it, that is going to be money well spent. While I don't think we are ready for that side of uh, Santa Ana uh, to be bring to it, especially because we're still dealing with the homeless, we're dealing with a lot of issues right now. And I think $1.6 million is a lot to invest in something that, for us, is our kids first and my community first. Thank you. Commissioner Gomez, um, I respectfully disagree. <laughs> um, I, I take my kids to the dog park all the time, and I have to drive very far just to take them. And I think having a dog park around my corner, I think, is great. Um, I think that we can't use a blanket statement and say, our, our residents will not take care of their dogs. Um, I'm one of a, a proud owner of two beautiful dogs and I take care of them very well. Um, and I think a lot of other people will too and people who usually take their dogs to the dog park are people that care for, for their animals. And what better way to teach our kids empathy and sympathy than taking them to where there's animals like the zoo and other places that foster a positive environment. I wouldn't mind, I'm actually for it. Any other comments? Commissioner Pedroza, I, I want to kind of rebut that comment as well against the park. Um, people often say this, that, oh, you're going to spend all this money for the dogs. Uh, a dog park isn't just for the dogs. It's, it, as we just heard from my fellow commissioner, it's the interaction between the people and the dogs. And uh, I might remind the entire commission, there's a lot of people in the city that aren't blessed with big yards, maybe aren't in safe neighborhoods. Uh, this would be a great place to be able to go and have fun with a dog and interact with other dogs. 
uh, it is a people and dog park, not just a dog park. And I think that needs to be brought forward. And again, when you look at how many cities do this and we don't, um, it really, it's, it's embarrassing. Uh, so I'm really happy that we're looking at doing this. Um, I understand that certain communities are still looking for parks, but as we've heard so many times here, you can't just wave a magic wand and have a park. You have to acquire land, you have to convert land. I mean, it's a complicated process. So here we have a feasible site in Centennial. Uh, you know, God bless you guys for, for looking at that. Uh, I think it's going to be well received, and, uh, and I expect that, that people will show up at the council to, uh, to voice their support. Thank you, commissioners. And okay, so that is it for new business. Uh, we will be moving on to informational items. Uh, first one is operations report from the library department. And this is uh, our library services new director, uh, Brian Sternberg. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, I just arrived uh, to, to the city of Santa Ana on January 6th. Um, I come from the city of Rancho Cucamonga, where I was deputy library services director there for about five years. Before that, I was at uh, Los Angeles County Library uh, in public administration for public services there. And before that, I'm, an, I'm an originally a Chicago native, where I worked for the Chicago Public Library, uh, Urban Library, for a about eight and a half years. So I bring a wealth of experience um, and I really want to think differently about the Santa Ana Public Library and what we can do. Santa Ana is a great community. Um, we have a beautiful building that was dedicated in April of 1960 and it has wonderful bones. It's actually a fantastic building. Um, so one of my focuses uh, right off the bat is facilities. It is to upgrade a lot of our facilities in terms of maintenance so I'm looking at things like uh, shelving that needs to be replaced, um, windows, roofs, things to kind of bring our building back and kind of restore it to its former former glory because uh, it is a wonderful building. So facilities are, re are really, really a priority for me. Um, but we're also looking at New Hope Library. Um, I am planning for a June reopening of New Hope. It's going to have an expansion of hours from 27 to 48 hours there this summer. It's going to also get all new public uh, furniture for the kids and the people who come into the building. And it's going to be modernized. We're going to do a lot of painting in there. And we're going to also provide, we're going to kind of take an old storage office space and turn it into what I call a STEAM lab, science, technology, engineering, art, and mathematics lab. We're going to offer some new technologies in there that maybe, you know, allow kids to come in and do movie editing, graphic design, and things like that. So we're going to get some computers in there. We'll also have some 3D printers. If you guys are all familiar with 3D, what 3D printing is, you can actually, it, it feeds, you know, you feed like plastic tubing through a machine and you can print out different objects. So we want to do some really cool things. I want to think about what our collections look like. You know, right now our collection is um, you know very traditional uh, you know lots of print materials but I want to look at increasing our e-collections movies music um, things like that e-audio books I'm looking to expand that quite a bit um, but I'm also looking to think about differently about our physical collections as well you know maybe not just books but maybe we have a toy library for kids to come in and check out toys maybe we have a seed library for people to to use uh, maybe we have a general library of things where people could come in and check out a sewing machine at one of our libraries so I'm going to be really rethinking a lot about what our space looks like I think we need to improve the seating at a lot of our libraries and make our spaces more accessible with more soft seating for children and families parents to come in libraries are really community centers as well so it's pretty uh, you know it, it's it's apropos that I'm here with P with the Parks and Rec because libraries are really community centers as well in many ways so um, I continue to look forward to doing all of that and um, I'm also team building with the staff quite a bit um, and getting them kind of getting the spirit back up at the library and hopefully we'll, we'll you know, bring in some new people and uh, 
I think the future looks bright for Santa Ana Public Library. Thank you. Thank you, and welcome again. Thank yeah. you so much. Um, I want to acknowledge Brian. Um, he's been doing a great job. He, I don't think he goes home. He uh, is here all the time. Um, in addition to what he was talking about, he's also looking into the um, a bookmobile. And so we have the cannabis funding uh, that will help fund that. And so that's in process. And so, you know, it's bringing the, the services out to the community. So right. it's either going to be a van or a bookmobile. But you yeah, more yeah we're looking. Thank you, Lisa. Yes, we are looking at a van, uh, kind of like a mobile tech lab kind of vehicle that will also have that that traditional kind of um, services on it, books and things like that, but very mobile, like easy to take books in and out on carts, but it'll also offer um, laptops, uh, maybe more 3D printing on it, things that are, you know, typical to STEM that we're, that kids are you know really focusing on in the schools you know supplementing the, supplementing that so maybe we go out to schools but maybe we also go out to parks uh, recreation centers senior centers throughout the community and bring the services out out into the city of Santa Ana uh, because we only have two locations so I think it really is important that we get out there and um, you know meet the community where they are of course we'll also be available for special events and whatever else uh, we need to do in the city yeah thank you Commissioner Gomez I had a question Brian yeah did we not have like the bookmobiles where they go to the neighbor and they could check out books before is that not something we, we did had? we did have a bookmobile years ago a long time ago. Though. A long oh, time and then ago. It I think the service. Oh, yeah, oh, it's my understanding that the service uh, stopped in two thousand eight. Mm -hmm. I believe was when the last time. Uh, yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. Thank the you. service stopped back stopped. then, but I believe, uh, yeah, it, we had it going way back from there. Like I've seen pictures of it going back to the early sixties for a bookmobile service. Yeah. So, yeah, really thinking differently, you know, outside of the box, you know, not just a vehicle that just has a bunch of books on it, but a lot of technology. It can be a place where we have a mobile hotspot. So, you know, if we're at a park, people can come and they can get internet connection and, you know, learn how to use the newest, you know, graphic design software. It's really meant to supplement because people have, you know, these internet everywhere. So what I'm looking to do is bring the things that aren't typically in people's homes, those expensive software suites, you know, where they can learn something new, like, hey, how do I edit music and things like that, yeah. Thank you. Commissioner Pedroza, so being from Chicago, I got to know, uh, White Sox or Cubs? <laughs> White Sox, I'm a South Sider. Oh, they're back this year, I think. They look good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Well, thank you. Uh, we're going to go on to, um, did you want to say that? Yeah. yeah. Um, just a few minutes here. I'd like to uh, talk about some excellent, outstanding, fantastic, made us jump off our, our chairs uh, news that we received some grants. We received two grants to build two new parks. This is the Proposition 68 funding. We received over uh, $5.2 million. And there was... Um, $254.9 million of grants. There were 62 grants granted, and we've got two of those. Wow. So that was that was outstanding. And this is for the uh, park site at Standard and McFadden and Rate and Myrtle. And so um, Mr. Ono, I'd like to acknowledge him for his hard work and the rest of the staff for helping to put these grants together. Outstanding. And, and what a beautiful thing to bring to the community is two more parks. Uh, one of them is uh, three quarters of an acre, and the other is, uh, one, I think, 1.9 acres. So um, they have been designed. The community has provided their input. Um, if you look at the press release, it's got the concept plans on there. So um, super, super excited about this. And so we will uh, be moving forward with this. Uh, we have to do, have them completed in the next two years. <laughs> so um, we'll uh, be working on this hard. So I, I just wanted to acknowledge Mr. Ono and, and his staff and uh, let you know we've got two more ribbon cuttings you'll be able to go to. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. That's wonderful news. Uh, we're going to go with uh, Director Ethan Fisher of the Santa Ana Zoo for his operations report. Sounds good. Thank you. Um, so I'll go through the operations report for the zoo. Uh, I'm not going to go through everything, but I'll 
pick out a few highlights from the different sections. Um, I usually sort it with the animal services section first, so those are all the things related to animal moves and management of the animals at the zoo. Uh, one very cute update there, we have four new Nubian goats in the farm. And those are, they're, they are adorable. They have these long floppy ears. If you imagine, uh, if there was a basset hound of the goat world, that would be the Nubian goat. Um, so they're young, they're, they're less than a year old, and they're out there interacting with the visitors and, and kids can feed them and things. Nubian, that's African, right? They're, they're a breed that has some origins from Africa and then also um, from England. So fun, fun, very docile breed, that's why we selected that one. Um, the baby anteater has been seen out and about in the zoo, so that's a very cute one. Um, and then we have a number of research projects that we're working on. We just had a phone call with a professor from UCLA this morning, so we're working on that. Um, Education-wise, now is our very busy season with education programs. Don't come to the zoo on a Tuesday or Thursday morning unless you want to be trampled by, by seven-year-olds. Um, literally, we have five to 600 kids on, on some mornings. So it's, it's a bit of madness, good madness, um, but all of our programs are pretty much full through the spring as far as education programs go for schools, uh, which is a good thing. And something new that we started doing with attendance tracking, um, back in... I want to say September, October, we started asking visitors for their zip codes when they came in the zoo. Mm -hmm. So we can input that in our, our software system when, we're, uh, when they're buying their admission tickets. And the first statistics that we have now for January, about 9.5% nine, nine of the guests coming to the zoo are from Santa Ana. So that includes the Santa Ana residence day as, as well, but over the month about 9.5%. So it'll be interesting to see how that number changes throughout the year. I don't know yet if that's a good or a bad number, but at least we're collecting the data and then we'll be able to analyze it in the future. Uh, we have a number of different uh, smaller projects, upgrade projects going on throughout the zoo. Uh, we did a small upgrade in one of the restrooms. We have some turnstiles at, going in at the front of the zoo, uh, working on security cameras, so lots of different things like that. And a big one that, that Ron's staff has been very involved with is the landscape maintenance program um, at the, in the parks. And we have a new landscape contractor at the zoo that's trying to move towards a more sustainable landscape management practices, lots of mulching, um, using organic products when they can, using uh, sustainable electric power tools for, for doing the landscape maintenance. So very excited to work with them. And already the landscape is improving quality-wise and, and people are noticing it. So it'll be interesting to look back retrospectively at six months and a year out um, at the progress that they've made. Number of volunteer projects have happened. Uh, we had two, two very good Eagle Scout projects. Um, and we have more in the works. And then working with our support group, Friends of Santa Ana Zoo, they've been working diligently on trying to bring in some more grant funding for the zoo and uh, do some more social media outreach and then planning the zoo's birthday on March 14th and 15th. One of the 15th is also a Santa Ana Residence Day, but there'll be lots of activities going on throughout the zoo uh, that weekend. And that will be the zoo's 68th birthday. Because the zoo opened in March of 2000, or 1952. Uh, and then on a, on a somber note, there was the, the zoo manager that was at the zoo for 16 years um, passed away at the end of the year, Ronald Glazier. So, but, what? Uh, Ron Glazier. So he was, he was, did, um, saw a lot of neat improvements at the zoo while he was there. Um, so we will miss him. And that is the zoo's operations report. Thank you, Ethan. Thank you. That's a very good clap. <laughs> We're going to move on to Jeannie Murado of Recreation Community Services. Good evening, everybody. Um, I'm going to be brief as well and just share the great things that are happening in recreation, which is all these pages, but I'm going to be brief and highlight some of the key ones. On the first one is the athletics programs and services, the youth basketball program. You heard a little bit about the coach that came today, right? The wonderful job he's doing. Well, we, I'm happy to report that uh, January the 6th, uh, registration opened, and we have over 490 youth registered for that program. 
and we have over uh, 78 cleared volunteers for, for that as well. The point that this was written, A, we're still pending, but we're all good with everybody. So just want to remind everybody that they do go through the background check, you know, to be sure that they're fine to work with children. So we do do that. Um, another highlight that I wanted to give you was senior services, like I always do, and the transportation continues. Um, and right now we have over 90 seniors that get transported to the senior center and back home. We also have shopping trips. Uh, some of these seniors, this is the only time that they're able to go and, and buy their groceries. So we provide the service to them. If you know of anybody that needs it, please have them sign up at the senior centers. And just as a reminder, Southwest Senior Center is still closed due to the flooding and renovation. But we'll come back uh, next time and give you more details about the grand opening of that. Um, we also received some one-time funding this uh, year. And uh, happy to report that the seniors are enjoying um, monthly trips. And the next one is to Palm Springs on, well, wait a minute, it's this Friday. Yeah, it's coming up this Friday. And they'll be going to the uh, Botanical Gardens in Palm Springs. So I'm sure they're gonna enjoy that. And one of the final items is Park Ambassador Program. Just giving you an update with that one. We have expanded that. Park Ambassadors are working seven days a week, um, Monday through Friday from 5.30 a.m. to 10.30 p.m. Saturday and Sunday from 7.30 to 8 p.m. Before that, we were limited on the hours. What they do, th there's two trucks on the side of the trucks. It's Park Ambassador. They have a T-shirt. They have bag, goodie bags. I call it goodie bags, but what it is is bags full of information. If they want to know how to reserve a park for, you know, uh, 500 people, they have the information on who to call, which is our reservations at Centennial. Um, so the Park Ambassadors are like sometimes the first point of contact that, that the residents see. Um, sometimes, you know, we do come across folks that, that have a party out there without a permit. You know, we don't stop it. We let them know next time, this is what you do. Okay. So they're very friendly towards them. And they check on permits for soccer games, etc. cetera, uh, uh, what, um, for all the different uh, sports that we have. And finally, you can look at our events for the entire year. It's listed there for you. And uh, you know we're working together with um, I'm working together with all my staff, but also like Brian mentioned, you know the library will be asking if if they could participate in some of our events as well. The zoo always does as well, so it's a true collaborative uh, to uh, put all these events together. So looking forward to seeing you this year at our events. The next one is July the fourth. Thank you. Thank you, Jeannie. And last but not least, the infamous Ron Ono. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I'll, do, I'll go through my report real quickly. Um, flagpoles, we are purchasing approximately 30 flagpoles to replace the existing flagpoles that without lights. So these will be with lights and with a, um, a solar panel on it uh, to light it from the top down. So the lights are not shining up, they're shining actually down to prevent the vandalism to the fixtures. Uh, you'll see photos on your, on your page. Uh, we also uh, completed the lighting in Rosita Park, the ball field lighting, using uh, Edison uh, on-bill financing program. Uh, the lights have changed uh, from high-pressure sodiums to LEDs, so they're also saving a lot of energy at the same time. Um, so we're also addressing a lot of our deferred maintenance as much as we can. Uh, at Saddleback View Park, uh, we repainted the rustic fence uh, just recently, the fence have never been tainted for about 14 years, and uh, and we also upgraded the uh, the signage or refurbished the signage at the Saddleback View Park. Uh, so the the fence should last another 10 years or less uh, on the work. We also uh, looking at the replacing some bathrooms, restrooms. The first one we're doing is at Delhi uh, restroom. You'll see photos of the existing restroom building and the proposed new restroom. Facility. I think I explained at the last meeting that the uh, the the bathrooms are set up where the the the, the lavatory is on the outside with a automatic shutoff valve, so it'll shut off at night. There will also be motion sensors, motion lights on the inside, so if somebody's in the bathroom um, late at night when they shouldn't be, the light will turn on, and then the PD can uh, have uh, uh, some kind of uh, um, notice that there's, there's somebody in there that shouldn't be in there. Thornton Park uh, tree planting, I'll just go by real quick. We're planting 17 trees this Saturday, so if you're available, come by at nine o'clock at Thornton Park. They plant 17 trees, 
And um, uh, we're also doing the tree plant in the Santiago Park on March 28th with the Uni Stanbridge University. We also purchased uh, new exercise equipment for Raiden, uh, I'm sorry, for Maple and Occidental uh, site. Uh, the, the equipment is getting purchased right now, and as soon as it, it comes in, we'll have it installed. Fitness court, we finished the fitness court at, Dal at uh, Jerome Park, and we're looking at putting two more fitness courts, one at Del High and one at Rosita. Uh, Thornton Park Lake, um, we've installed the pump, so all the lake and water is now circulating. We still need to go in there and refurbish some of the lining but it's pretty much recirculating. Uh, just quickly, um, on, the, on the grant that we just received, I was going through this, as, we, as you were discussing the dog park issue, I was going through the list of projects uh, that were submitted, and two of the cities received uh, grant funding for dog parks. Before, in 2011, when we first started talking about dog parks, state would not fund dog parks. On um, this recent uh, Prop 68, they are now funding dog parks. So, Commissioner Peters, a quick question for you. So, did they do annual funding of projects with that prop? Like, can we come back next year and ask for more project funding? Uh, this is the third round. I'm not sure if this is going to have a, another round or not. But this they might third. eventually use yeah. up all the funds. Yeah. Yeah. Gotcha. Darn. All right. Thanks. And that concludes my report. If there's any other questions, any other questions, commissioners? No. It's a great job. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ron. And to add to that, I just want to say this, Commissioner Garcia. Um, Cabrillo Park, I live right by it. The lights, all the neighbors are so happy. It's so uh, brightly lit. Great. And also noticed that they installed a gate so that people can't park there at night inside. Mm -hmm. And I actually saw the security guys yesterday um, getting someone out of the parking lot. They were getting ready to close up. So I think that's going to cut down on the crime and the loitering and... You know, it's the, all the, the stuff that happens at night, you know. So anyway, thank you very much, Ron, for thank making you. that happen. And staff, obviously. Uh, we're going to go ahead and move on. Do we have any public comments at all? We don't, I don't think. Okay. Uh, no? Okay. We have a special guest over there. I don't know if anybody saw her. She goes to Long Beach State. And she is here, and she took a couple selfies with us. Um, she's cute. So she's supposed to come and listen to a board meeting. So I hope you've learned a lot. And uh, it's, it's kind of fun how government works. So um, we're going to go ahead and move along to uh, public comments. I mean, I'm sorry, board member comments. Um, we'll start on my left with uh, Commissioner Gomez. Commissioner Gomez, I'm just very happy um, to hear everything that you guys are doing. It makes me very proud to be on the board and to be a resident of Santa Ana. Um, I, when I heard about the grant, like you, we need like a special title for Ron because yeah. he keeps getting grants, and every time we come, it's just like all these great news and all these grants that are much needed in our neighborhood and our community. And I'm really excited, and I'm hoping that the council approves the dog park. So, crossing off my fingers. Thank you for everything you guys do. Hi, uh, Commissioner Lamont. I wanted to share the same sentiments. Thank you to the staff and for all of you for all the hard work uh, you do. I know a couple years back the city was kind of in the tighter financial picture. Now that things have looked up, I mean, you're really getting some of the uh, much needed and overdue maintenance, which is good, right? Because if our residents are happy, gives a good image to the city. I just want to do also a minor correction on the minutes. It showed that I was absent at the last meeting, but I was present, so I just wanted to correct that. Yeah, but yeah, but thank you guys for all the work you guys are, are doing here for the city, and you know we really wouldn't have the great city we have if it wasn't for the work of all the city staff. So thank you. Real quick, chairperson and commissioner Alaman, uh, if you do notice, you are listed as a writing at five thirty-five on the minutes. It oh, is listed there. So absent, that's why. It was. Uh, it's listed absent when the roll call happens. But if you take a look at the uh, presentations portion after that. Your name is listed okay. as arriving at 535. Thank you so much. Commissioner Pedroza, uh, again, welcome, Brian. Um, you know, I remember as a kid, my mom would take us to the library like, all the time. I, I didn't speak English when I was a kid, so it worked. You know, I, I remember by third grade reading Greek mythology books because I ran out of kids' books, and so I was like super nerd, but, uh, but it was fun. Um, you know, with regards to the zoo, looking at the the nine percent of the visits was Santa Ana residents. Yeah, my thought there is, 
I'd love to see more cross-pollination with all of the parks and recs departments in the zoo. Imagine if every park had a placard announcing the, the zoo free dates for the year. You know, you guys have been doing a great job on Facebook and I've been sharing that and it gets a lot of views. Um, but maybe the city vehicles having a zoo graphic on there with the website. I think we have a crazy website URL though. We'd have to get something shorter like SA Zoo or something. But I, from what I remember, it's really long. Ah. <laughs> uh, uh, Maybe, I don't know. We'll have to think of so We'll have to effort that one. But uh, but I, I just think that, you know, this is the youngest city in the county. I remember when my kids were little, we were there all the time. University, they, you know, they get older and you know, become more else teenagers or whatever. But uh, it would be so much fun, I think, to, to just get the word out more about all the fun stuff going on there. Thank you. Commissioner Macias, uh, first and foremost, I'd like to thank you, welcome you. And uh, thank everyone for their hard work and the efforts to bring more money, uh, applying for funds or for for monies to better our community. So I'm looking forward. She doesn't go anywhere. And if you do pass the recipe to everybody else, because uh, now I see a team working for Santa Ana. Thank you. Yes, amen. Uh, thank you, Commissioner Guerrero. Thank you so much. I can't really talk too much. Uh, they got a tooth pulled out. Unless you want to hear the airplane story. <laughs> no. Okay, thank you. Thank you, commissioners. And anybody else? Um, but since you're walking down memory lane, uh, Art, uh, Commissioner Pedroza, um, we used to go to the McFadden Library. So now it's, um, I think, San Anapadit, the PAL program has it. And that was my library because I lived off of uh, Williton Rate. That's where I grew up. And so that was our library, and it was just shocking to me to see when it, when it closed that it was a very sad day. But I'm just so glad to see that you guys are seeing the importance of, uh, you know, reading and making sure uh, we have access. So um, with that, can I just say yes. a few more things? Um, this is, it's all good news. I've been mm -hmm. here, you know, not too long. But uh, things are looking up. It is great for parks, recreation, and community services. And what I mean is for the community, because we're able to provide safe, clean, and green parks. We just had our contracts implemented in February, and I hope that you all are seeing, starting to see a difference, especially the spring when we start overseeding the, uh, the grass and taking care of our parks and facilities. We want to bring new amenities to them. I mean, like picnic tables and um, benches and... Um, new equipment, exercise equipment. So we're trying to do, th and, and bathrooms, we're trying to do things that the community will see immediately. And so any kind of money we can squeak out and uh, figure out how to purchase it, we're, we're going to do that, and, and we are doing that. So it's very uh, rewarding for me to be here in Santa Ana. This is one of the best jobs I have ever had. I've been doing this 30 years. And the, the community appreciates what you do. And so that, that's really rewarding to me and, and, and such a fantastic staff. Um, uh, anyway, it's all good stuff and we're very happy. <laughs> so Lisa. <laughs> With that, um, before I tell us the date of the next meeting, I just need a motion to close the meeting. Anybody? Motion to close, to adjourn? Commission Sorry, I'm not using. Move to adjourn. Move to adjourn. Anybody? Second? Thank you. Um, and our next meeting will be March 25th. So have a great month, everyone. A meeting adjourned.